everybody. All the greatest qualities of you, the things about you that people love, the things about you that you are most proud of, are not things that they ever saw or appreciated. Because, because they could only see through their own eyes. And so largely what they have shown you they saw was they saw someone who was jealous, who was trying to one up them, trying to make them, trying to humiliate them, trying to steal from them their, their uh, identity and who they believe they are, was threatening to expose them. Whatever the, you know, whether it was the fact that I wanted more closeness, which made them feel like a failure, whether it was that they thought that I wanted to expose, all, you know, all of this was lies. All I wanted to do was have a close-knit family. And they saw the way that I related with my friends, related with my children, related with people, and everything that, every th single thing that I got value out of, where I felt special, where I, where I was, especially with my mother and with my sister-in-law, where I excel and they didn't, that's what they geared in for first. That's what they wanted to take first. They went right for those relationships. And where I really saw it, and this is where it really came home for me, was that I realized that, that my son dying was a victory for them. That that's the way they saw it. That they, it was impossible for them to understand the grief because they didn't feel it. They didn't have any grief like that. Not for me and not for my son. And so when my mother sent me that email, it was to get narcissistic supply. She wanted to get narcissistic supply. She wanted to know that I was in pain, that I was hurting. They didn't see me. So the wonderful, so, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, why, you know, I'm like, I'm missing my son so much. I'm thinking, God, you know, I would love to have a daughter like me. I would love to have a friend like me or a sister like me. What, where, you know, I would, if I could just duplicate myself, I'd be so happy to have a friend like me or a daughter like me in my life. But they didn't see me. They didn't see me. All they saw was this petty person who was doing to them whatever it was that they were fighting against. And um, they, they just didn't have the emotional maturity or the depth or the love to conceive of who I really was. They didn't appreciate me at all. And so the person that they got rid of, so the reason they don't miss me is because the person that they got rid of is this, this unlovable person, this person that no one would like, you know, and this person who was a threat to them and all this stuff, which I never was. So you can't take it personally because the person that they discarded isn't even you. The person they rejected isn't even you. And it is just an advertisement. It's a billboard about my mother that she could do that because a healthy mother, a healthy mother would crawl across broken glass naked to stay with her kids. It was always, I always had the sense that it was just gonna be too easy for me to be discarded, that I had to play my my thing just right or it or they would discard me that it would be that easy for them to do and sure enough it was it sure enough it was now likewise i was hanging on to and grieving for a mother and a father and a brother that were never there that were never going to be there my mother was so envious of me i didn't realize how envious of me she was all the things i was doing to try to make her proud she was seeing as competition or as me trying to make her feel less than or something, which is never what I was intended to do. I was in, my intentions were always really pure. My intentions were to be near her, to try and have a growing relationship with her, to try and be friends and have a good relationship and to help her deal with my grandmother as they got older and then take care of her in her old age and her, my father in their old age. That was completely what I planned to do and to have grandchildren for them because she always said she wanted to, that she always said that it was going to be grandchildren are going to be when she would really shine because my grandmother was such a wonderful grandmother she said yeah well she's got it really easy i'll be great too when i'm a grandmother you know that's the easy part i was like great you know so i expected her to be to come into her own and be a really happy grandmother and she wasn't she wasn't a happy grandmother either and i think that must have broken her heart because i think really a part of her was probably also really hoping it was true that that she would be um, a loving 
grandmother something like my grandmother was and she just wasn't she had this sense of failure because here all around her was you know she had this mother who could love and connect with people and just love people and she had a daughter who could too and she just she was caught in between and couldn't connect with either one of us or with anybody else and she really focused on where I connected with people. She really focused on that and that's what she wanted to, to destroy. So they took as much as they could of the things that would allow me to have had my special connection with my grandmothers and grandfathers. Couldn't take back what they had given me when they were alive. They couldn't take back those memories and those moments. Those were mine to keep. And, and I am this compassionate person because of those grandparents. And so I am ever so grateful because I know they made the difference between my having to be follow, you know, chase my tail like they're doing and not, you know, not being able to love. And, you know, I did lose my son and it's devastating, but, you know, I'm going to do something with it, with it. My relationship with him is not over. Our family, you know, he's still part of our family. He's still part of my life and I'm learning how to, how to connect with him. But even if I never connected with him, even if, even if it was, even if we were just, even if he was just worm food now, like they believe, even if that was the case, which I totally know that it's not, I know that his spirit is right here with me and, and you know, nothing happened, he's really close by. But even if I didn't believe that, even if I didn't believe that, what I know that I had is I had deep, a deep connection to my son for 20 years. A deep connection that was a deeper love than my parents will ever feel for anybody for anybody. They will never know what it feels like. They will never know what that kind of much, my mother will never know what it feels like to have that kind of maternal love. Don't feel bad because it wasn't you. The person that they rejected wasn't you and the person that you are, the person that you miss wasn't them. That person that you miss was a figment of your imagination. That person that you miss didn't ever exist. You'll find the person that can really see you and know you for all that you are and love you for all that you are and all your great qualities, not just what they can get out of you and what they can use you for and then discard you. So it's brutal. It is, it is super brutal. And especially, you know, it's brutal if you had this happen in a relationship, a romantic relationship. But it is especially brutal if you were raised by people this way and the people in your and there wasn't a single person in your home where you grew up that unconditionally loved you.